Okay, now, uh, next part of this uh, uh, scavenger hunt that we're doing here in Viscom here. You've got your photos, you put them into a photo collage. Now we're gonna take them, we're gonna work on some labeling. I wanna label every single photo on there. And the reason I'm having you do this is because it gives you practice with text, because you've never probably did use text with some of these editors before. And also it's gonna get a little practice with something called a color picker, which is gonna make your ability to design things look so much better, okay? So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go to pixlr.com, like you can see right there, okay? And we are going to choose the playful Pixlr X, or Pixlr X editor. So I'll choose that. And then I'm gonna open an image. So I'll open up my image I just did that uh, scavenger hunt uh, file. So I'm just gonna go right here to where it says recent and I'll be able to find it really easily because it should go across the top right here. And let's go this one right here. I've been practicing, so there's more on there. So I just double click there or I, I double click. There we go. That takes it and there is my document. Okay, remember I made that, I made this photo collage. So there it is, okay. So now my goal with this thing is to take it and make it so that every one of these photographs is labeled. Okay, so it's a, it'll take a little bit of time, but once you get the, the the gist of it and you start to understand how you can duplicate layers, you can make yourself and make it a lot easier. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the first three pictures right here. I'm going to label them with what they are using a different font, which is what I'd like you to you know play around with different fonts, look at them, and different colors for two things, the fill and the stroke. Okay, so the fill color or the outline color, stroke and outline, you can use both the same. Okay, so let's start with this bug here. This is my bug. It's a murder hornet. I haven't seen one, but I'd grab the picture, but terrifying, right? So I'm going to go up here or over here where it says text, and I'll click on the text button, and I'll click on add new text. And as soon as I click on add new text, it gives me a huge giant text box in there. Okay, so I can fix that by just going over here and typing what this is. This is my bug. So I'm going to go B-U-G, bug, okay? The frame for this thing is huge. I don't need to have the frame that big, all right? So you can just click and drag on the side of it. You can't grab from the corners. It's just where that blue line is. This right here will allow you to twist it, right? So it'd be kind of cool to twist it, have it match up to the size of this, of, uh, of the same angle as it's playing, as it's with right there. So I'll move it like to right there. Still kind of see its face. It covers it up a little bit. Maybe I shouldn't have cropped that picture so close, but that's okay. I feel like that font is a little bit too large. So I'm gonna go down here to where it says size. Right now it's set to 80. And I'm just gonna use this slider. And we're just doing one word at a time. So there we go. So now I went to 39, maybe a little bit larger. Mm, boom, how about 50? So I'll put that there, resize it so you can see it there. Now that's, that's the first part, just getting the word there. Now we need to make it look better a different font and all that. Because one of the things that kills me about noobs and designing is that they don't change things. They're like, well, it's on Arial or it's on Times of Roman, so I'm just gonna leave it there. No, play around, let's see what happens here. Um, if you scroll through here, you can see all kinds of fonts that are on there. And what's cool, when you hover your mouse over it, it kind of gives you a short preview of what it looks like. Now, some of the fonts are really, really thin and they're smaller. So let's say I'm gonna choose this Arctic one right here. So I go, boom. And in Arctic, I don't think the size 50 is very big. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make it a little bit larger. So I'll go like 77. So really depending on the font, really helps you decide what size it's gonna be because you can end up changing that. Okay, so now we've got color. It already comes with predetermined colors. So if you click on this, you'll see it changes the fill color every, every time I click on that. What I wanna see you do is I would like to see you do this. See this little guy right here? hover your mouse over on it. This is called the color picker. When I click on this, you'll see a little cross mark on there. And wherever I hover the mouse, it's showing me a sample of the color that's there. So I want the word bug to be the same, like kind of dark orange color that I see like right here. So if I click like that, it automatically changes the text color to that color. Cool, right? Well, now the problem is obviously I can't see it. I can't read it. But that's okay because I've got my, my uh, size I took care of. I wouldn't worry so much about line spacing or letter spacing. Well, I guess you could do letter spacing if you want to space it out and have the letters go out wider like that. So you can do that and bring them closer together. Um, line spacing would be if you had multiple lines on there, which you will only have one. Over here now, we've got some other options. There's background, which fills in the entire background of the box. 
We're not going to use that for this one. What we are going to use is this one right here that says outline. Okay, so if I click on outline, it put an outline around the outside of that. And now remember what I said to you. We have to be able to see everything that's going on. So what color is going to look good? Well, you could kind of click on these and say, okay, I can definitely read the text, at least when that's on there. But that blue and all that stuff doesn't look quite right. So just do this. Just click up here and go to white, right? Perfect. The fill color looks great. I've got a nice white outline. I can totally read the text just fine. So I would say to you, for most of the time, when you're doing strokes or outlines around letters, white or black, white or black. Now, we can play around with that. Maybe we'll try something a little bit different a little bit here. But that's kind of what we're going for, okay? Scroll down a little bit more, and we've got there's punch out size. Don't worry about that. I wouldn't even worry about shadow. I, I feel like that's all good, okay? And so what I can do is I can keep on scrolling down. Let me get this out of the way, hide my tools, and go to close. When I go to close, hold on. Sorry, I got to get these ads out of the way. Maybe I can't. Anyway, I'll make it work. Um, so I've got that one on there. It looks good. And what it did is it put it on a layer right here. That's a that's the text layer right there. So if you were to check this box for visible, every time I check that, you notice that word bug goes away. Let me scroll in so you can see it better. Oops, I don't want to do that. I want to do this. Uh, nope, I don't. Never mind. I lied. Uh, I want to go off and on, off and on. So this right here represents that layer where the word bug is okay so i've got a text box in there it looks good what if i do this go to this little dot 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 and then go down i've got to get my stuff out of the way here sorry go down to where it says right here it'll say duplicate so if i duplicate it nothing really happens that i can see but if you were to grab your move tool and click right here and drag, whoops, I do that. Click and drag, it just made a copy, right? It just made a copy. So now I can double click on this text and I can say, uh, this was the family. I'll just put the word family in there because that's what, that's what Bucky is, he's family. Okay, I can then press escape or I can just go ahead and click that off. Now it says family, right? So now if I go back to my type tool, I'm gonna take this twist it, turn it. I'm going to go up here, get myself out of the way again. I'm going to go over here and say, okay, a different font this time. And let me scroll down a bunch. So you try some of these different things here. So I'm going to go, hmm, that one kind of, that's something like kind of horror kind of looking or something like that. So I'll go to this one, Reagan slab. I have no idea where that came from. It's too big. So I'll scroll up. All right, scroll down. There we go. Scroll down. And I'll just go ahead and I'll type in a number this time. So 77 is pretty big size. So I'll go 40. That's much better. Okay. So I'll go 40, press tab, take this. I'm going to move it up here just so I can see that it's there. Now I'm going to mess with my color. So for the color fill, you better believe I'm filling that color with Bucky Boy's forehead right there. And then for the outline right there, uh, white looks okay. Let's see if I go to the outline and change it to black, what that looks like. So go outline, color, I'll go down here to black. That looks good. Okay. So now I've got that one on there, right? So I've got bug and family and let's do the last one. We'll do the eye here. We'll do the eye. Okay. So back over to this layer, I'm going to dot, dot, dot right here, move myself out of the way. I'm going to duplicate that layer, move myself back. Click on my, my, gosh, I always forget to do that. So I click on this tool, click and drag this where it belongs. Close that window. Uh, go back to my type tool. And now I'm going to take this, turn it so that it fits there. And you better believe that I'm going to fill that with a uh, color, that color blue right there. So first off, let's go ahead and let's change this so that it says I. I, there we go. Then we're going to go down here and change the font. And I like this one. It's kind of a thick font like that. Color. This is going to look awesome. Now I can go to my eyedropper, get one of those beautiful blues that are in there. Like that. There's the fill color. And then the outline color right now is black. So let's try white. 
Mm, I think it looks better in black. All right. So I've got that. Exit out of there. Take me, move me up there. Get rid of the stupid ad. Okay. So now I've got those three things on there and they look pretty darn good. Okay. So um, if you're having a hard time navigating around, you can always move this thing. You can zoom in and then move around on here to see what you want to see. So I can zoom in and get a whole bunch in there. Okay. So I've got all that in there. It looks good. Let's say I finish all my, all my labels that are on there. All right. Here's what I do next. I'm going to go to save. And now it's going to say, okay, it, I can see the things that are on there. Remember, you're going to be done with all of them. Uh, it says Marcus Zarati scavenger hunt collage. I might even put with, uh, uh, with, with uh, labels or with titles. Okay. JPEG type. That's fine. JPEG's fine. Quality. I want that cranked up. I want it to be 100% quality right there. All right. Make sure this is set to high. Select download. Okay, there it is right there. So let me go to show and folder. I can see this thing right here. I'll go to recent, and you'll be able to see it. All right, marks your right scavenger hunt with label. If I was to double click on it, it's gonna open it up and show me what it looks like. There's my labels, looking really good. And then I could go through and, and I can see all of them that are on there. This is what I want submitted for our assignment. Completed with all the labels on it, everything done, different la different fonts, different colors, things like that, all laid out like that, okay? Really cool looking document, and that is the entire thing, okay? That's what we submit for the assignment, and that's what, I'll, that's what will be going in the gradebook for your grade. So good luck with that, and uh, yeah, may the force be with you, always. All right. So we're going to go ahead and close.